Hi everyone, uh, this is the second part of our gas stoichiometry video and this is the one where I'm actually going to delve in and give you an example of just how to work through a gas stoichiometry problem. Like I said at the beginning uh, of the first video, this is really just the idea of trying to incorporate stoichiometry uh, with the concept of gases that we learned in this chapter so far, which is the ideal gas equation, Dalton's law if you have a mixture of gases and try to see if we can incorporate those equations into calculations of chemical quantities um, which is of course stoichiometry okay so in this uh, semester so far we've gone through stoichiometry of just you know general reaction we got we went into stoichiometry of aqueous uh, species and then now we're going to go into stoichiometry of reactions involving gases uh, here's an example of a reaction that contains gases in them. Uh, here you have chlorine gas which is a product uh, of this reaction between MnO2 and HCl and the question here is how much of the MnO2 reactant has to be added uh, to excess HCl in order to produce you know a certain amount of uh, volume of chlorine gas at 25 degrees and 755 torr. Okay? So the goal in these kind of um, type of problems is always first you want to do stoichiometry. So if you want to do stoichiometry at some point, you have to convert the known information into the number of moles of that species, right? Just as we, we've been doing with all the other stoichiometry type problems. So in this case, we were told we have a certain number of chlorine gas, certain volume at uh, 25 degrees and 755 torr. That means that information has to be converted into a number of moles of Cl2 and you might want to think about how you can get there. And once you have the number of moles, of course, it's a matter of taking that number of moles and relating it to the number of moles of the MnO2 and eventually the mass using your mole-mole relationship or your stoichiometry and then your molar mass. Okay? Okay, so here's the problem that we're going to have to work through. And, of course, the first thing um, here, as I said earlier, is we have a couple of steps where we want to figure out the number of moles of our uh, Cl2 gas, okay? And then afterwards, after we figure this out, then we want to relate it using our stoichiometry uh, related to number of moles of uh, MnO2. And then from here, we can calculate the mass of MnO2, okay? Now, it's actually not too difficult to calculate the number of moles of Cl2 because um, we have a gas here, so then we can use our ideal gas equation, PV equals nRT. And if you rearrange for number of moles, N, you just get PV over RT. And if you plug in your numbers that you have here, you have 755 torr. Again, this has to be converted to atmosphere because... Not necessarily because you have to do it all the time, but in this uh, specific case, because you're using R, the unit of R is liter atmosphere, so the atmospheres have to cancel. That's why you have to convert it to atmosphere. The unit of volume has to be expressed in liters, uh, just so, again, it could cancel. So 255. And then um, you have R, which is 0 0.0821. And again, the only reason I'm not writing the units out here is because I just don't have space. Ideally, you want to write that out. So you can make sure you cancel out all the appropriate unit. And 298 is Kelvin temperature of 25 degrees. And if you do all of these calculations, you'll get 0.010354 moles of uh, chlorine gas. Okay. And then your second step is to take this and relate it back to the number of moles of MnO2. Now, of course, before you can do that, you want to be a little careful here and balance your equation. Right, because right now the equation is not yet balanced. So I'm going to um, just balance it out really quickly here. You can do it yourself as well. But you'll see that to balance this, you're going to need to put in uh, two oxygen, because we have two oxygen on the, on the MnO2. We have four chlorine and now four hydrogen. So that's easy. That means that we need to put a four here on the HCl. Okay. And then what we're going to do then is once we have the balance equation, we can use it to relate, in this case, the Cl2 to the MnO2. As it turns out, they have a one-to-one -one stoichiometry. The, their coefficients are both one. So that's actually fairly easy to solve this problem at this point. You just need to go ahead and um, 
calculate that mass of MnO2 uh, based on that stoichiometry, based on that one-to-one -one stoichiometry, okay? So I can write it here, number of moles of uh, I'm sorry, uh, let me just, let's just go straight to the mass here so we don't have to do this a couple of times. Mass of MnO2 would just be the number of moles of Cl2 that we have, 0.010354. And notice that I'm I'm just putting in all these numbers just so I don't have to run right now. I'm going to round at the, at the very end. The mole is going to be mole of Cl2 and mole of uh, MnO2, right? And that happens to be a one-to-one -one stoichiometry, as we just said. And then lastly, I'm going to have the, uh, to get the mass, I have to use the molar mass of MnO2, which is 87 grams per mole. And all the units would cancel to give you the unit of mass, which is 0 0.901 grams uh, or thereabouts. Okay, so that's the answer for the question. And again, this is a fairly straightforward question of gas stoichiometry, but the idea is, you you know, as you see in the, some of the problems and problem set, that you're going to try to incorporate basically this ideal gas law that you learn, the equation that you learn about gases, as well as Dalton's law and all those other concepts, and try to relate it to the concepts of stoichiometry that you learned in, in a couple of previous chapters, uh, limiting reactant and so on, so you can put, you know, start to put all these concepts together. Okay, just to show you again how you uh, we can solve all this problem here. Uh, you know, I, I did it earlier in, in a separate um, slide, but then I'm going to combine it together now here. But you can see that the balance equation is shown here with 4 and 2 for these coefficients. doesn't impact the calculation in this particular case. Uh, and then these are the steps that we did, and then these are the actual calculations that I did uh, to solve that particular problem. Okay?